It is now time for member statements, and I recognize the member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise on behalf of my constituents of London Fanshawe who are facing challenges of accessing health care they deserve. London Fanshawe is a community that is particularly hit hard by this issue. On a weekly basis, I hear from constituents concerned that they cannot access primary care. I spoke to a constituent in the riding who told me she is fortunate to have a family doctor, but many of her family members do not, and are presently patients of a nurse practitioner-led clinic. The issue is this clinic has a high turnover, and the last three years they have had three nurse practitioners. Currently, this clinic has hired a part-time nurse practitioner with a full-time caseload. When she asked why a part-time nurse practitioner was hired instead of full-time, she was told it was a funding issue. Speaker, we know that nurse practitioner-led clinics work for patients, and we know when people have access to primary care, their health outcomes are better. But when we have a lack of funding, what happens? People's health conditions get worse. They are forced to go to the emergency mm -hmm. room. People deserve to have access to primary care when they need it. Today, I stand on behalf of my constituents and all Ontarians to demand this, to demand this government commit to adequately funding health care so that all our communities have access to reliable primary care. Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Aurora, Oak Ridge, East Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, this week is Small Business Week in Ontario. It is a chance for us to recognize and celebrate the hard work and dedication of small businesses and small owners throughout our province. Small businesses, Mr. Speaker, are the backbone of Ontario's economy. In fact, 98 per cent of businesses with employees in Ontario are small businesses. As of December 2017, there were over 400,000 small businesses with employees in Ontario. These businesses are run by innovators and job creators that employ almost 2 million Ontarians, Mr. Speaker. Small businesses are the lifeblood of this province, and that is why we are tirelessly working to create an environment where small businesses can prosper and grow. As it is Small Business Week, I would like to take this opportunity to thank and recognize small businesses and small business owners and entrepreneurs all over this province. Without you, this province will not be the rich, dynamic place that it is today. I would like to thank the Canadian Federation of Independent Business for their initiative as Small Business Saturday is coming up. I encourage everyone to please participate in this national initiative and show their appreciation for a local small business by dropping into a small business on Saturday to see what they have to offer and maybe give them some business. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The member for Beaches East York. Speaker, my youngest daughter is a proud, gorgeous trans woman. She was born in 1992, and throughout her time in school, the sex ed curriculum did not teach consent or respect or support for LGBTQ plus kids and their families. My daughter was bullied and actively hurt in school by her classmates and, frankly, her teachers and the administrators at her schools. Perhaps if the updated curriculum had been in place, that would not have been the case. Knowing the pain that my daughter and our family faced, I fear that other young queer students are at risk of bullying and harassment, and worse, because this government has decided to drag us back to the last century. Rain Fisher Kwan is a student leader and a constituent of mine. She is brilliant and thoughtful and articulate on why students want and need a sex ed curriculum that reflects 21st century conversations about respect and consent. A few days ago, Rain tweeted the following. I want to have a mediated on-camera discussion with the Minister of Education and the Premier about the sex ed curriculum. I don't think either of them have actually spoken to a single person born after 1998 throughout all of this, and they need to. The CBC's Metro Morning host, Matt Galloway, said on Twitter that he'd happily moderate this discussion. Speaker, I hope the Premier and the Minister of Education will be brave enough to take Rain up on her offer. I think it would be a salutary conversation for everyone who participates and listens. Thank you. Thank you very much. The member for Markham Unionville. Mr. Speaker, on Sunday, September 30th, I had the opportunity to visit an exhibition. 
witness Canadian art of the First World War in the Valley Art Gallery of Markham. This exhibition was produced by the Canadian War Museum. Mr. Speaker, witness of the First World War, they record the experience of the conflict on scraps of paper and in pocket-sized sketchbooks. They sketched their everyday experience, battlefields and bombed houses. The impact made me think of a song that we may know. Where have all the soldiers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the soldiers gone? Long time ago. Where have all the soldiers gone? Gone to graveyard, everyone. Oh, when will they ever learn? Oh, when will they ever learn? We have a lot of disagreement here in this house, but we disagree with a, in a civilized way. May peace on earth, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The member for Meshkigawak, James Bay. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to take a few words to recognize Sika JM in my riding, which celebrates his 25th anniversary on October 25th. It's on October 20th that say KGM FM opens uh, to deserve the, the region. At first, uh, it was listened to by 76%. Today, 39% of francophone from Capus Casing listen to this station. We, they listened to the shows on radio 3.5 hours per day. It's very important to have this station. While they are interested in the outside world, most of the news on CKJM reflect the ideas of the region. The management is supported by programmation and collect funds. This committee make sure that this uh, radio station is viable. I wish to thank CKGSM is important, and your presence will continue. Thank you, CKGM. Thank you very much. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Mr. Speaker, I re recently had the great honour to speak at the Canadian Canera Vision Annual Charity Dinner at the Paya Banquet Hall in Mississauga, where Mr. Ronald Kalako was the guest of honour. I presented the Canera World Vision Award to Mr. Kalako for his benevolent service to humanity. When Ronald married his wife, Jean, back in 1983, they took the pledge to devote part of their income to charity. It is a pledge they have followed ever since. Over the last 35 years, Ronald has donated millions of dollars to help less fortunate, regardless of class, race, religion, or language. He has been a pioneer donating infrastructure facilities for the benefit of the general pu public across India, from hospitals to school, to public roads, to police, to judicial buildings, to rehabilitation centers, to treat addictions. I know that all the members on both sides of this House agree that Ronald's hard work, dedication and his commitment to give back to society are an inspiration for us all. I would like to honour him together with Premier welcomed him to the Canadian Canera Vision at Queen's Park. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The member for Niagara Centre. Well, thank you, Speaker. It is not with pride that I rise today. This week, the highest level of local government in my riding, the Niagara Region, received an award of significant dishonour. Niagara Region was announced as the winner of the annual Code of Silence Award for their outstanding achievement in government secrecy. The award was given by the Canadian Association for Journalists, News Media Canada, and Canadian Journalists for Free Expression. For those of us who have seen firsthand the shocking level of secrecy that this regional government has participated in, the award comes as no surprise. The Niagara Region has delayed and denied freedom of information requests 
and consistently showed a lack of transparency about councillor expenses. In the past year, the Niagara region has been subject to two ombudsman investigations. The first due to the illegal seizure of a journalist's computer and notes, where during the investigation, the region's council attempted to influence the content of the report. Regional leaders frequently refuse to speak to the press, and the Conservation Authority has been taken over by a cabal of developer-friendly councillors. Speaker, I did warn a couple of months ago in my statement at 4.30 in the morning when protesters were being dragged out in handcuffs that this is what happens when partisan politics and developer money infiltrate and seek control to control municipal government bodies and conservation authorities. Speaker, I've been calling for accountability and transparency at the Regional Niagara since my first days at Queen's Park. My predecessor, Cindy Forster, called for it for years before me. The voters of Niagara have a chance this Monday to give their opinion on their current representation, and I believe they will choose a change toward greater. Thank you. <laughs> Member statements. Refer to Topical Centre. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This weekend, I will be attending the unveiling of the Holodomor Memorial at the Princess Gates at Exhibition Place. This is a truly significant event in history for the Ukrainian community in the Greater Toronto Area, which is home to over 145,000 residents of Ukrainian descent. For those that don't already know, Holodomor is the name given to the genocide by famine that occurred in Ukraine from 1932 to 1933. The scale of this genocide is significant. Millions of Ukrainians perished as victims of a man-made famine under Joseph Stalin's regime, with 25,000 people dying each day at the peak of the famine. The unveiling of this memorial parquet on the 85th anniversary of the Holodomor will provide a beautiful and serene gathering place for remembering the victims of the genocide of the Ukrainian people and raise public awareness of the Holodomor as a genocide in this tragic piece of Ukrainian history. The focal point of this memorial will be the sculpt sculpture, Bitter Memory of Childhood. I hope you visit and as you look at the sculpture, I hope you truly appreciate the value of human life and how fortunate we are to live in this great province and in this great country of ours. Here, here. As a Polish immigrant myself, my family and I always give thanks for the democratic values we share. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member statements. Member for Ajax. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to highlight the efforts of the town of Whitby to support its emerging technology sector. Speaker, in the historic centre of the town, there is a developing innovation ecosystem of over a dozen companies, together employing in excess of 500 people. Speaker, recognizing the significance of this emerging tech sector, the town recently purchased from the province the 9,000 square foot former land registry office, which is currently being renovated to house a business Y Help Accelerator. Speaker, the purpose of the accelerator is to fill a gap, helping tech companies to scale up operations, create well-paying, value-added jobs, and establish roots in Whitby. This focus, Speaker, represents the very type of long-term investment needed to build Ontario's economy, and one which our government strongly supports. Speaker, I congratulate uh, Mayor Don Mitchell and the Council for their foresight and 360 Insights, a private corporation recognized within the top 25 fastest growing in Canada for support and vision. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you to the member for witness. 